years two years and hallelujah hallelujah now what it would see hold on hold on hold on to what hold on to Yah he is holding on to you now I'm gonna tell you this there's been times in my life where I got so despondent I turned loose but he still had me he was holding on to me see we make mistakes in the thinking that it's our grip that's got us where we are. It's not our grip. It's his grip that got us where we are in the stations of life where we are. It's his grip that has brought us from A to where we are right now. It's his grip that's going to bring us all the way to the end. If we just stay with him, honor him, obey him, and trust him, he's going to bring us all the way. Praise him. Romans 8, 28. Y'all ought to know that one. Everybody ought to know that one. Much as I quote that scripture. For we know. See, even the scripture agreed with Brother Johnson on that one. <laughs> we know that all things work together for good for those that love him and are called according to his purpose. Can we hold on to that one? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. See, that's one of those that I hold on to. Because when things start going awry in my life, I say, I know that this is going to work out for my good. Because I know I love him and I know I've been called according to his purpose. So whatever's going on is going to work out for my good. Hey, can we hold on to that today? And stop looking at the situation and think about what he let happen to bring you to another height, to another level, to another state of mind. He is bringing you from one place to another, but he got to bring you through some stuff to get you there. That's for when my bills used to get funny and all that kind of stuff. I didn't get wayward and go back out in the street and sell drugs. I didn't go out there and do this and that. All I did was hold on. Hold on. Why, Isaac? Because I know that all things is working out for my good. Right now, he is teaching me something that I got to learn. How to do without when I don't have. Because at one time, me and Mother Williams over there, we were riding on a cloud, boy. We was way up there, school teacher, bus driver. No, I wasn't a bus driver. Working for Shell Oil Company, don't dump on my own dump truck. And, boy, we, money was rolling in, boy. And she wanted to go somewhere, pew, we were gone. She wanted, pew, bye. That was the days I used to sit down and watch her trying clothes on. Now I don't like that one. <laughs> Living large. And the father said, okay, I see you know how to handle that one. I said, yes, sir. He said, let me see if you can handle this one. You fired from off a shell. Can you handle that? I went in the woods and cried. I did. <laughs> how long you stayed in there, brother? I said, oh, a couple of hours. Until I heard him say, get out of these woods, dry your tears, I'm get out of here. I got you. Y'all heard him preach that sermon? I know, y'all can understand why I preach like I preach. See, my, min my misery became my ministry. You understand? I was crying in the woods until he put me out. He told me, get out of these woods and dry your eyes up. I got you. Don't worry about it. And sure enough, I didn't have all that money rolling in, but I was a happy camper. Hallelujah. Why? Because it worked together for my good. How many of y'all know all them hard times you went through was for your good? Hallelujah. It's for your good. Malachi chapter 4, verse number 2. I'm almost finished for those who want me to hurry up. Malachi 4, 2. But to you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness will arise with healing in his wings, and you will go out and leap for joy like calves in the star. You know when you let a calf out the star, how he grab up and kick his back legs and run around and he said that's how you're going to act. See we, we, we sit down in here too much. You know when we could get up and do a jig you know we sit down like we all that in the bag of potato chips. Let me tell you something. Somebody in here ought to get up and run like a calf just been let loose out of a stall. When you realize and your eyes open up and you see where he has brought you from. Well, let me change that. Let me put it on this side. When you can see what he has done for you in your health, in your strength. 
Let me, let me put it together now. When you can see your children are healthy, your grandchildren are healthy. Oh, nobody responded yet. You got a house that you're living in. You got vehicles to get around in. You, 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 got, you got fun to put gas in them things, to ride around. You can go to your closet and say, I don't want to wear this. Let me see, I wanna, let me see what I want to Just stand there and wonder what you're going to wear because your closet full. And I know some ladies in here got shoes that are stretched from one end to the other end. You got all them shoes. Somebody still ain't got no reason to shout. Well, hold on a minute. Let me tell you. You're not, you're not in the undertaker parlor. And you're not in a hospital bed. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get you to see that we need to be holding on to some praise and some worship for what he has already done. That don't even count for what he is going to do. The son of righteousness have risen with healing in his wings. And somebody said, well, he going to heal my sore neck or he going to heal my aching back. I ain't talking about that. We need some spiritual healing. Some of us have been hurt in our spirit man. Hallelujah. Broken because of what some church did. Broken because of what some pastor said. You went in there and told them your business and the next thing you heard it over the pulpit. Scarred you. I'm talking to somebody. Hallelujah. You've been sitting in the church all this time, Javine, and they walked over you and asked somebody else to do it, knowing you got the skill to do it. And some people that got scarred and hurt, and then, like you said this morning, Sister, Sister uh, um, Austin Over, they sit down and they get them scars, and they don't say a thing about it. And those scars become cancerous and be working through your body, eating up your, 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 your spirit, man. Eating up your love, eating up your joy, eating up your peace. And that's why you come to services and can't clap, can't shout, can't dance, can't do nothing but just. Because you're getting eaten up on the inside. And the father said, but the son of righteousness arose. And he got healing in his wings. Hallelujah. When you, when you, when you search and find out, see these things that wear on my, on my, on my clothes, and unfortunately, I don't even have nothing on today. I feel kind of naked. You know, my tzitzi, those tzitzis are called wings. Can you imagine that the, the, the woman with the issue of blood for 12 years grabbed that tzitzi? And she was instantly healed. Somebody said, he's a right now, yeah. But sometimes he takes his time. You don't want to rush and give you too much because you go be- get beside yourself. Oh, he moves for me. I know he moves for me. No, you be quiet. What about when he don't look like he moving for you? Feel like he didn't even hear you. Oh, I know y'all don't feel that, right? But I want you to know he's still right there. Hebrews 13, 5. This is the last one for the day, I think. Sometimes he takes me other places, but we're going to say this is the last one for right now. Hebrews 13, 5. This is something important for us in this Trump year. Always talking about what you got, how much you own. I almost got caught up in that too, investing money and all that. And some investments are good if you want to go that route. Ibrahim 13.5 says, let your way of life be without the love of money. You said money in your book? Silver? That was the exchange, wasn't it? Huh? And be satisfied with what you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you. Now, we ought to all be able to say, if I don't get a big pretty house, 
What I have is good enough. I might not get that Lamborghini, but this old Toyota is going to get me where I need to go. Am I talking to somebody? I might not be dressed in the elaborate clothing of Michelle Obama, nor do I have the cars of Clinton, nor can I fly around in the cars of Creflo Dollar, but I'm satisfied with my Dodge. Be satisfied with what you have. We got enough clothes in our closet to almost last us for a lifetime if we take care of our stuff. I got clothes in my closet, been in there for about 20 years, and I still wear them. Because I, I put the iron to them and make them look like they're brand new. Yeah. I ain't looking for, I'm, I'm looking for something new now because I want something new for Passover. You know what I'm saying? I like to, I like to, Look nice when Passover comes. Do my best. Because I'm coming to one of the first celebrations of the year. Now you notice I said one of. Because this is one continuous celebration. 52 times a year. And I love the Sabbath. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm going to get me some new duds for the Sabbath, too. Reason being, this is a special day. Hallelujah. Why is it so special, Brother Isaac? Because y'all are here. My Mishpaka. Hallelujah. The yellow demon of the Most High is in this house. I'm so glad. I said I'm so glad to be in this house with you all and we ought to be so glad to be in the house with him. Isn't that right? Well, brothers and sisters, it's time for us to hold on because the ride is getting ready to get rough. Y'all heard what I said? It's time to hold on because the ride is getting ready to be rough. You know when they put you in that roller coaster and they put that little gate down, lock you in there? What they're telling you is hold on because the ride getting ready to be rough. Now you know on a roller coaster you go way up. You, come, you go up slow, right? It's telling you about life. See, before you can get way up there, you know, where, you, where you're pretty comfortable with money and you're comfortable with your house, it's a long ride to get all the way up there. And then all of a sudden, when you get all the way to the top, it come down fast. How many of y'all know it's fast to come down? And then when you're trying to get back up again, now you got to go around that curve, down in the valley. Then you start coming up again. After you get up there again, shoo, what is it telling you? Life is getting ready to be rough, and you got to be holding on. Don't ride with your hands like this. 